Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Grounded video. So again, we're just about a week out from the uh, release, the full release of Grounded. Hopefully a lot of you guys have been playing it and enjoying it and getting to the uh, the nitty gritty of the game uh, itself up in the upper yard and uh, across the whole backyard itself. But right now, I just wanted to share uh, 12 tips that I've got for the 1200 plus hours that I've played in this game all throughout early access and what we've done in the, the newer stuff. Again, going to try to keep spoiler free and just kind of give you some uh, example of the Fermicity family. Just going to try to give you some tips that I've experienced, uh, some stuff that I've learned over the 1200 hours that I played the game. So let's jump right into it. First things first is going to be to analyze everything. So everything you run by when you're first starting to pick up the uh, pick up the game, analyze literally everything, grab everything analyze everything you see we just discovered a field station this is going to be one of the biggest parts of the game uh as you play through you're going to uh notice one of these right here this is called a resource analyzer and what this is going to do all right so what you're going to do you can notice that we have uh plant fiber we have mushrooms and we have a sprig and we also have a pebblet here the pebblet is down here in equipment and hauling that's good to know because there are uh, grass planks and weed stems that you're going to get. And if you're carrying them, then you can analyze them. There are some things that you have to be carrying in your hand to analyze. There are other stuff that it's going to go into your backpack right here, your inventory that you can analyze as well. So we'll go over here. You'll notice that we have analyzer charges. So three of three. So there's a reason that you can only analyze three things at, uh, three things at a time, right? So we'll go ahead and analyze the plant fiber we have here just by hitting space. It's analyzing. You can see right here, it's a common resource. So now we have new recipes deciphered, crude rope, fiber bandage, and a plant slurry, right? Now that's also going to reward us 15 plus brain power. And that brain power is going to go towards this. If you hit W uh, or click on this, everything is broken down through 15 levels. So the more you analyze, the more it's going to unlock stuff. So this is why I say analyze everything. Now we have crude rope, we have fiber bandages. You see that? We can go ahead and analyze something else. If you don't want to watch this, you can skip. But we'll go ahead and go through that. Now we have a mushroom slurry, and this also rewards you with raw science. Raw science is going to be the key to when you're able to uh, go to the burgle shop, the swap shop. You can use this raw science to purchase new recipes, whether it be uh, mutations, runs the gambit, all your decorative items for your houses and stuff like that. And now we're halfway to level two. Let's go ahead and analyze one more here. Sprig. And now we have spiky sprig, trail marker, roasting spit, sprig, friend, sprig fence, and plant fiber. And we have another 30 raw science. So you can see over here, we are now out of uh, uh, recharges. So we cannot analyze anything else. And you'll see right here, it's going to tell you next charge at 948. This goes by the in-game time right here. So we're at 930. Now it's 931. So in uh, about 16 minutes, we can analyze something else. So, But this does not apply to every field station. So if you analyze three things at one field station... You can go use the resource analyzer or another field station and analyze three more things. But we have to wait uh, to analyze these pebblets, but just to give you an idea, so now we have a level two item that we unlocked right here, and then it's just gonna go down the board. You can see that we go from uh, uh, tier one items to tier two, and then all the way up to tier three, down here all the way at the end to unlock stuff. So analyze everything that you pick up. Um, every new item that you uh, pick up and analyze is gonna give you one raw science, it's going to unlock new recipes. It's going to unlock uh, basically everything you need to progress further in the game. So let's go ahead and move on to number two here. All right, so jumping into number two, it's going to be to make sure that you prepare for any difficult situation. If it's a new lab that you haven't gone to, if it's a boss that you're trying to fight, you want to make sure that you're prepared as possible. So let's take, for example, let's say I want to go over to the termite den. Now I'm going to look at my, uh, you may not have this yet, but... If you've gone over near the termite den and analyzed some of the termites, you're going to know that the termites are weak to stabbing and salty based on your peeper ability that we have in the game. It's going to give you your weaknesses and resistances. So I'm not going to go take a uh, sword, a spicy sword. I'm not going to go take a black ant spicy sword to go fight the termites. I want to take a salty spear, something like that. Anything salty or stabbing is going to help me against all of the termites. So let me go ahead and prepare, see my weapons here. So this is not going to do good. This is a fresh. Let me go ahead and take, uh, let's take a sting, a salty stinger spear. And then let's also take, uh, just, just for S and gigs, uh, let's take the salty club of the mother demon. That's going to do more damage. Another thing that we're going to need is, uh, 
to prepare for the insects. So we know that if we've gone near the termites, maybe fought a couple on the outside when you're exploring the upper yard, you have termite soldiers and termite workers. The termite workers have the acid attack they're gonna shoot at you. And the termite soldiers are gonna have that dust attack that they bring up to you. So you're probably gonna want a good, good amount of defense. Let me double check my army here. I've got black ant armor, and this is gonna provide me a crit after block and uh, plus crit half your stamina. And it's medium armor, which is gonna affect my stamina. So I'm not using heavy armor, which is gonna drain my stamina a lot. I'm also not using light armor, which is gonna actually cause me to take more damage. So we're gonna be right in the middle here. I'm gonna take this, and I'm also, if I'm using a one-handed weapon, why not bring my shield? So I have a black ant shield with me. That's gonna increase our blocking strength, so I can block some of those attacks. Another thing is they're weak to stabbing, which is the, uh, the arrows do stabbing damage. So I'm definitely gonna bring my crow crossbow and some arrows too. If I can maybe use that as, a, as an advantage as well as the uh, salty spear here that we have, then I'm definitely gonna use that. Try to give yourself the best opportunity possible when you're going into a lab, when you're going into a boss fight, like say the Broodmother, or uh, anything else like that that you've not done yet or that proved to be difficult in the past. Don't try to be high and mighty and just run in there with what you have. Uh, cater your gear and your equipment to the difficulty of the situation, so to say. So I'm also going to make sure that I have my smoothies here. They're going to increase uh, max health and uh, damage resist because I don't know what kind of damage they do. I'm also going to bring some healing items. And I don't know how long I'm going to be in there. So I'm going to bring some food. And I'm also going to bring my water. And then another thing here, double check your mutations to make sure that you're using the right mutations for the right setup that you have going into that area. So preparation is... Uh, Tip number two, make sure that you're prepared for the situation you go into. If you're just going out and exploring and stuff like that, you probably have a good idea of what insects you're going to run into or what you're going to do. Just make sure that you're preparing. All right, let's jump into number three. People, if you're new to the game or if you've uh, played it for a little bit, you tend to forget what mutations you have equipped. There's a lot of mutations in the game itself. What do we have here? 28 mutations in the game. You're not going to be using the same mutations all the time. Depending on the situation, like I just talked about, if we're going to the termite den, Maybe I don't have to run as quick, so I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on Javelin Ear right here. Let me go ahead and throw that on. It doesn't matter. The, the point is to double check your mutations because when you unlock them, there are no passive mutations. Once you unlock them, you have to come in here and activate them. And uh, to begin the game, you're only gonna start out with two. Use those milk molars to increase the max amount of mutations. That's a hot tip right there. Definitely the first thing I would go through uh, to use your milk molars is to activate the most number of mutations you can have at one time, which is five. Definitely make sure you get that because the mutations are a huge part of the game. You're going to be using them from beginning to end. And make sure the mutations are going to work uh, hand in hand with the situation you're going to find yourself in. All right, let's go ahead and jump to number four. All right, so number four is kind of a big one, right? So uh, early in the game, you're going to run out of stamina a lot. So number four is going to be make sure that you're using the right setup to reserve your stamina. You can see our stamina bar is down here to the left. You can see the little line there, that's gonna be 100%. So all my mutations and everything that I have set up for my armor and weapons and everything is gonna affect the amount of stamina I have. So also another thing, when you're running through the yard, your stamina is gonna be affected. If you run out of stamina, I'll give you one little tip here and watch my stamina go down. So it looks like it's going down pretty slowly. But I want you guys to watch it as it goes back up. So I'm going to go ahead and let it run all the way down. And then we'll see how quickly it refills. And now it's going to run out. Watch how quick it refills here. It kind of shoots up right there, right? What I see a lot of people do is when their stamina gets pretty low, rather than letting it run out, they'll go ahead and let it recharge. So I want you guys to see. I'm going to let it run out a little bit more. We're going to do one more perimeter check over here. We'll go check our wall. So we're at about 50% stamina now. Now I'm gonna stop running right now and let it refill. Notice the difference in speed that it refills when you let it drain all the way and when you stop in between. So if you're already running and you're getting close to running out of stamina, go ahead and let it drain, run it all the way out because it's gonna refill a lot quicker than it will um, if you're less than 100% and uh, above 0%. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the next one. All right, so jumping into number five, it's gonna be work smarter, not harder. There is a lot of possibility for cheese in this game. And by cheese, I mean taking advantage of a situation. So if an insect gets stuck, or if you can find a way to get one insect to attack another, and uh, you can take advantage of that, definitely do it. For early players, getting resources from insects like the uh, wolf spider, the stink bugs, the bombardier beetles, 
can be really difficult to kill. Use the environment, the insects, uh, your brain basically to take advantage of the situation and work smarter, not harder. So we have a roly poly right here. And I, uh, let's say I don't have my uh, spicy coltana here. So what I can do is go to try to get one of these ladybird larvae that kind of hang out around this area and see if I can get them to attack this roly poly. All right, so here we are. We've got our ladybird larva friend over here. He's ready to attack. Let's see if we can get him to attack this roly poly. And there we go. So now, instead of wasting our uh, durability on our weapons, wasting our armor, we've got the ladybird larva doing a majority of the damage to the roly poly itself. This ladybird larva is probably gonna die. So what we wanna do is go ahead and jump in here and just use that extra damage that the ladybird larva, see right there? It did enough damage that we can probably jump in here and take out and uh, pick up the pieces here. There it is. So now, not only do we have the roly pole that we are trying to kill, we also have some extra resources from the ladybird larva right here. Go ahead and grab those and grab those. So just be smart. And if you're having a, a particular difficult time trying to kill an insect, see if there's other insects around that are aggressive towards that one and see if you can man uh, maneuver them into a fight with those insects and then you can take advantage of it, take all the spoils. All right, let's jump into number six. All right, so jumping into number six here, we're going to talk about pets. Now, the pets, I think, have kind of been a big disappointment to the game, but they do have their uses. You can see right here that we just uh, picked up our pet here, and we don't have him assigned to a house yet, but what he does bring us right here is a pet inventory. Extra 10 slots of in inventory space that you can use while you have a pet assigned to you. As you know, with all survival games, inventory being full is a huge uh, issue with the game. Go ahead and make sure you have your pet assigned to you. That way you can use that extra 10 inventory slots. So, all right, let's jump into number seven. All right, so we're right over here outside of the uh, Black Ant Hill, AKA the Black Ant Lab. And uh, one of the other things I wanted to tell you with tip number seven is don't rush the labs. As you progress through the game, the labs are gonna get progressively more difficult and they're gonna have more insects. They're gonna be more, uh, more challenging to you. There's no harm in stopping about halfway through and then going back. Take some time, go ahead and uh, re-engage yourself with higher uh, weapons, uh, better armor, more smoothies and stuff like that. That way it's gonna give you a better chance to go in and get it. All right, let's go ahead and jump to number eight. All right, moving over to number eight is gonna be picking a good base location. So now that the game is fully released, we have the entire expanse of the backyard to pick from base location. Obviously I'm over here at the hedge right now. I think I have six total bases in this save. One at the hedge, one at the mysterious machine. I have one at the sandbox, uh, one at the upper yard, and then a second one over at the upper yard as well. So picking a major base location can be detrimental. If you don't have a good base location that can be easily defended from raids, you're gonna constantly have to waste your time repairing it. But think about just having one major base in lower yard, one major base in the upper yard, and then outposts across the yard. You're gonna be spending more time trying to gather resources or repairing your base then you are actually playing the game. It can be detrimental. So, all right, that's with base locations. Let's go ahead and move to number nine. All right, jumping in at number nine is gonna be smoothies. Now, I've been a bit a big advocate for smoothies ever since uh, they were introduced because they can help you a ton. I carry around three uh, typically because they do different things depending on the situation that I find myself in, whether I'm going to fight a boss or going into a particularly difficult area. I might need bigger heals or a better buff you know, to increase my uh, attack or decrease the amount of damage I'm taking in that situation. Use smoothies. They're easy to make. It all goes back to preparation. The more you prepare, the easier a situation is going to be for you. All right, let's jump to number 10. All right, so number 10 is going to be something else that I noticed a lot of people have issues with, and that's perfect blocking. So you can practice perfect blocking. The red, red worker ants or the mites are probably your safest bet at uh, practicing your perfect blocking. We're gonna go over here and pick a, try to get one of these wolf spiders over here. And it's all about learning the insect's attack pattern. Well, I know this wolf spider has uh, a certain attack pattern and it looks like he's bringing his buddy over here. So we're gonna try to get away from him. And he got us there with the jump. You can see for the most part, I'm perfect blocking a lot of his attacks. Now 
not the best showcase or perfect blocking, but I was trying to uh, trying to get away from the uh, the other wolf spider there. The biggest thing is just learning the insects' attacks. Once you, they all have the same attack pattern, and uh, a lot of them actually share some of the similar attack patterns. So the orb weaver, the uh, wolf spiders, the orb weaver juniors, the brood mother, all share similar attack patterns. The more you fight them, the more you're gonna understand the attack pattern and be able to get that block off. All right, we're narrowing it down here. Let's get to the uh, number 11 here. All right, so number 11 here is kind of uh, more for the newer players, but it's also just a reminder for the more experienced players to make sure that you always have a glider uh, in your inventory. Whether you're using uh, one of the new newly found accessories in the game in the accessory slot or uh, just a uh, dandelion tuft in general, make sure you have one equipped because you don't know how many times you find yourself in a situation where you're jumping off of something high and you think you have a dandelion tuft with you. Next thing you know, you don't. And then um, the last one here, number 12, is going to be another simple one, but it's something I constantly forget. Make sure you're resetting your spawn point close as you can to the area that you're going to be at. That's it. That's our 12 tips over the 1,200 hours that I've got playing the game. I could do more, but maybe for another video. But for right now, we're just going to cover these ones. I th feel like these are pretty important. And again, I don't want to jump into too many spoilers with the game. I still want everybody to experience the game themselves. If you have questions, come at me with the questions. We'll get them answered uh, as we progress to the newer areas. So just enjoy the game, play the game, have fun, learn from your mistakes, better prepare going into something in the future, and uh, just have fun. Enjoy the game's full release after nearly two years of uh, early access we finally have the whole game go out play it play it with your friends play it by yourself i don't care just enjoy the game and have fun so that's all we got for this video guys uh make sure you like comment and subscribe if you haven't already we'd love to have you join the community we'll catch you guys in the next video stay original my friends later hey thanks again for watching everybody if you like that video go ahead and check out one of these videos right here thanks bye